Hi, this is Phil Hinton. Welcome along to another video and welcome back to Ghent in Belgium. This time, we're going to have a look at Fidelio. I'm Benoit Buret and I'm responsible for audio strategy and innovation for Philips Audio. Nice easy question to get us started here today. We're talking about audio and so on. What got you involved in audio? Why is it your passion? Ha, huh, interesting. What, what got me involved in audio goes back a long way actually. Um, basically one of the things that really struck me when I was a kid, I had this old uh, uh, CD sound machine and uh, the woofers were apparent. And when I was playing music, I was very uh, very intrigued with how such a uh, random movement, apparent movement, gave such a coherent sound. So that was maybe one of the first triggers when I was younger. And then th one thing led to another when I came to studies. I started with sound engineering, which I thought was engineering in sound, but actually I realized that acoustic engineering was probably more uh, the thing I was after. So I did a bit of uh, recording studios and then moved on to the acoustics and started in Philips uh, in 2007 as a trainee. So what is your role here? What is it that you do? So basically I come from research and development. So my role in uh, TP Vision is to actually uh, now bridge uh, re research and development, R&D, with product management, marketing, and, and uh, all the other entities. So I really try to help translating back and forth uh, everything that's around audio technologies and, and, uh, and listening experience. So what does your job involve when it comes to the actual product and how that product sounds? So um, the, my job uh, basically consists of uh, helping defining very early on uh, together with marketing, with product management, with design about you know, what should we focus on for the next five years. Uh, and then when it comes to shorter term, um, it is a mix between uh, defining early steps of the acoustic uh, concept for new products, essentially flagships. Uh, and uh, equally, uh, something that uh, I'm very much involved is sometimes um, uh, creating and validating proof of concepts for new, new concepts. And then further down the line, uh, we're talking about sound quality tuning. I'm responsible for the, uh, the, the validation and the tuning and the validation of all Fidelio products. So in essence, it's a mix between defining and being in the specifications and uh, listening and, and signing off. And does all of that happen here in Ghent? So here in Ghent we do that uh, essentially, uh, but we work very collaboratively in TP Vision towards uh, Philips Audio. So we collaborate very closely with other sites, uh, be it in uh, Amsterdam uh, when it comes to uh, definition of the new, uh, new products and with Taipei, Shenzhen. Uh, and Singapore for everything that's more around uh, pro uh, product development and really project execution. And when it comes to Fidelio, what is the ethos of the brand? What is it that you're trying to do? So with Fidelio, what we try to do is basically bring um, audiophile sound to the, the, the mass market. So I like to call it uh, mass market premium. Uh, which dissociate from the true audiophile, uh, typically. Uh, so the idea is really to, be, to deliver premium sound quality. Uh, and one thing that is quite specific to Fidelio is probably uh, the, uh, the, very the, the, the matching of the sound and acoustic principle to the design very early on in the concept. And that is something that I believe very much into because I believe that the form factor should be defined by the acoustics, but it has to also fulfill certain aspects that the consumers we target are really much uh, interested in, uh, in terms of home integration, how the product looks or how it wears and, and how, you, uh, how, how, how nice it looks when you wear in it, I would say. Yeah, so when it comes to um, uh, the actual sound quality, is there a sound signature that you're looking for? Is there a a Fidelio sound, as it were? 
Yes, so the idea is that not only we have a Fidelio sound signature, but I w we are really striving to get it all the way across Fidelio and Philips. So the idea is to really have a sound signature that belongs to Philips. We start with Fidelio, be it the premium range, we have much more, uh, how to say, it's like you really uh, remove a lot of the constraints. Uh, so we have achieved a sound signature that is at the moment very uh, nicely con under control with the headphones range and with the entire Fidelio range and now we're str we are basically working on the way to be able to bring it to all the other Fidelio, uh, Philips uh, products core and entry range as well for in-room speakers which is quite a, a challenge to bring in but we're that's pretty much the next next big milestone. So how do you go about that? Um, because obviously different products at different price points are going to use different quality of drivers and so on. So how do you retain that signature across such a wide variety of products? The, um, the sound signature is something I believe is not necessarily defining the entire quality, perceived quality of the sound. I think the main aspect that we try to strike is, a, is the spectral balance that uh, should be achievable for any product that goes really full spectrum. The difference between an entry, a core or a Fidelio product would be probably in the uh, capaci capability of rendering the higher frequencies or going high res or the lower frequencies and, uh, and e equally uh, one of the aspects that is probably going to be more difficult to achieve in core and entry would be the the really the 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 timing of all these uh, the, the the really the spatial rendering the timing of all these elements together uh, so i think the idea is that we should aim for the same balance and everything we can do with the rest is basically going from uh, the expectations at entry and matching uh, the expectation at core and at premium so when it comes to uh products, especially premium products and so on, are you benchmarking those products against other manufacturers? So yes, we are very much benchmarking not only competitors, uh, I think anything can be a, uh, an interesting listening experience to, and to know of. So I think as uh, an innovator and maybe a background of engineering, uh, knowing your enemy and knowing the market and whatever is uh, the latest uh, listening experience for certain technologies, example spatialization, example um, uh, all kinds of new new uh, formats that come in, these kind of things need to be known by the engineers and the innovators to know a little bit also uh, what what is interesting, what is really new to the consumers we're targeting. So yes, benchmarking is a big part of our job as well, but not only the competitors, I would say. Do you have to be an enthusiast to do your job? Do you have to be a, a music lover or a movie lover to, to understand the, what a good sound is? I think in order to really appreciate the quality of sound, sometimes you get, you get drawn into the emotional side of it. And I think that's what really the listening experience translates. It's, it's emotions and in essence it's very difficult to work without those <laughs> so um, you get very quickly dragged on when you when you tune a product to well if it's tuned right if you're near near the end of the sign enough that you actually tend to be uh, yeah to, to, to start enjoying sometimes your your moment listening to the product maybe a little longer than the analytical phase would require so yes, there's a part of it that I believe is always yeah, being somewhat passionate about music and, and, and listening experience in general. Uh, and for movies, yeah, that's obviously something that, well, it's full of emotions, right? So it's, it's, if it's translated well and naturally, transparently, you get dragged into it uh, pretty quickly. So let's move on to the products for 2022. Um, some of them are sat behind you there um, and we'll, we'll get some closer looks as this video goes on to, to the different products and so on. But let's start with the, the sound bar that's behind you there. What is it and, and you know, what can we expect from it? So the, the sound bar that, that's behind me is the uh, Fidelio FB1. So it is the, uh, the sound bar we release uh, today as part of the Fidelio family for 2022 which is composed of a soundbar, a wireless speaker and a, a wireless subwoofer. The FB1 essentially is a Dolby Atmos soundbar uh, with integrated sub. So uh, it delivers 7.1.2 uh, uh, channel distribution. 
And uh, this time we basically try to respond to a, a, a market trend or maybe a consumer trend that tends to be about people looking even more for convenience uh, when it comes to soundbar. And for Fidelio, what we wanted to do is to, of, of course, preserve the level of quality, sound quality and design quality that we really always set out to, to deliver. Uh, so the soundbar itself is a combination of that. There's, um, there's always this kind of very premium touch and feel that we always keep, uh, keep having with authentic materials and Murhead leather partnership that we continue and that you will see across the entire range. But from a sound perspective, which is probably also the more interesting bit for me, is uh, that what we did is we paid particular attention to the LCR design, so front, left, center, front, right design, where all of them are two-way Dapolito design. So Dapolito, for those who are maybe not familiar with the concept, is uh, basically try to align the acoustic center between the mid-range and the, and the high frequencies by having two medium and a tweeter in the middle. So it's something that we, we got inspired from, from the audiophile world, uh, obviously. But it's something that is really helping on getting the precision, not only on the spectral balance, but also on the timing of, of those. And the crossover becomes much more precise. And maybe a collateral that we also felt was interesting was the fact that the, the sound dispersion is a bit wider this way. It's got less, basically less, uh, uh, distortion as you move away from the axis of the bar and if you think of it we're targeting consumers that are yeah they are premium they like good sound but they also have a sense of practical and convenient sound and that's where we say that we don't only aim at one seat in the couch but actually the entire couch so going from the the, the sound bar which is obviously the heart of the system what else can consumers add into the Fidelio lineup so the Fidelio lineup uh, is currently, I would say, starting with the soundbar, you have several options you can go for. You can go for uh, spectral enhancement, so going lower in frequencies by adding, adding the subwoofer, the FW1. So the bar will extending to 50 hertz. If you add the sub, you will extend to 30 hertz. Uh, so in essence, I think really what I would recommend as a low frequency extension for consumers. Um, and then you could also decide to go another way, which is more uh, spatially. You can expand it by actually adding two FS1s, two wireless speakers as satellites. And then you get a real, real 7.1.4. So the satellites being uh, Atmos, uh, Atmos uh, enabled. So that's really something that gets you the full experience. At least that's the ultimate experience we would, uh, we would propose with the system. So um, I think this is pretty much how the building block approach uh, could work. There's a, a side one that is also quite interesting. If you want to get the first steps into home cinema but don't really want a soundbar, then you could always go for two FS1s and you put them around your TV and via the PlayFi uh, ecosystem, uh, you can actually get to a 3.0.2 the TV would be dedicated to the center channel, so it's quite nice to have a dedicated audio system just for the dialogues mostly. Uh, and, th and then the two FS1s would tell care take care of the front left, front right, and at most uh, left and right front. So with that, you get already a very early step into, um, into home cinema, and they are Ambilight enabled, those two FS1s. So not only um, sonically, but also visually, you start to expand the Ambilight experience. So it's also a nice way to, to get into it without needing to go into a soundbar. Does that only work when using it with a Philips TV? So the center channel would work with uh, any PlayFi device, uh, PlayFi enabled TV. But what we do is we developed it and we, uh, we, we, we are the first to really launch it and develop it. And with the combination of Ambilight, it just becomes so natural. And what do you do about timbre matching across the front channels there? Because they are going to have slightly different uh, sound signatures, aren't they? Yeah, so the idea is that for the dialogues, the idea is to really go for uh, inte uh, speech intelligibility. I think that's really the, the target. So uh, also having the dialogue really on the screen is something that we also um, realized was important to our consumers. Uh, and then with respect to the spectral uh, matching, in essence, the speakers receive different channels. So uh, one will receive the center channel and the, the two speakers will receive the front left, front right, which are already uh, separated at the source, I would say. 
So this is a little bit how we how we manage it. Uh, it's really the idea of uh, the, the best experience would be through uh, a multi-channel source. In essence. And we've mentioned Dolby Atmos here, but does it also support DTS? Yeah, of course. So via the Play the PlayFi platform, obviously all the DTS uh, uh, formats are being supported. Um, and then, of course, these are two. Uh, how to say, two DTS and Dolby are two players that are a little bit uh, obviously competitors. Uh, but from, from our perspective, the, the soundbar itself will always be able to deliver the full experience, be it the native with native content or by upmixing any other multi-channel content to get really the full experience from the bar itself or from the system as a whole. I think that for us, the way we approach the, uh, the user interactions or user experience is really focusing on two items, ease of setup and ease of day-to-day -day use. So this is really something that we actually take very seriously through our uh, Home Sound Made Easy campaign. Um, it is something that for us is really important to make sure that we get the most intuitive interface to get all the products set up. So for example, with the PlayFi, we have, uh, you can set it up via the TV, which could be your familiar environment, or via uh, your phone and the, the Philips Sound app. So in essence, we, we give we give basically the, S, the, the, the most important and uh, the most intuitive platform, the ones that people are used to, uh, a chance to be able to set up your system via those platform is probably the best uh, approach and that's the one we decided to go for. So the idea is really to, have, um, to really have an easy way to, to, to get those uh, speakers and the TV to communicate together as one, really. So it should just be a case of somebody coming in, switching the TV on and everything works? Yeah, the idea would be indeed after the setup would be indeed that everything becomes natural and that in the end people use their system on a day daily basis. With they don't use every single feature every day. They use some of them every day and that these are the ones we really focus on. So indeed the idea would be that once it's set up you're pretty much you're good to go on a day-to-day -day basis. When we're talking about this system in particular, is it aimed more at home cinema or music or, you know, it, can it be used for both? Well, that's a very good question, Phil, because indeed that's one of the things that I believe in very much. The first couple of months of tuning the soundbar, the FB1, was actually purely focused on stereo content and music. Once we get to that natural reproduction, that transparent reproduction, because an audio device is about transparency. If you look at the audiophile world, um, when, there, when there is a 7.1.4, it's discrete speakers, but the technology within those speakers doesn't change, be it about the stereo set or a multi-channel set. It's the same speakers, so in a sense, there's no reason why we would not aim at the same transparency. That's really all it is for me. So working a lot on the music first, and once you're happy with that balance, once you're happy with that transparency and that signature, then we start to play with the spatial immersion, adding the surround, adding the atmos, and then really fine-tuning the balance so all together it sounds still as balanced for music as it does for, mu for movies. So this is something that's quite dear to me. Um, the FB1 is a soundbar that you put under your TV, but it shouldn't be just a, a, a home cinema system. It's your main living system in your living room, it's your main audio system in your living room and it needs to, to deliver on music as well. You've worked hard on these products. What's the, what's the one thing you hope people will get from them when they use them? I think what I hope people to, to understand is although a soundbar has in, in history been a very home cinema centric, a soundbar can deliver very good music experience and that it shouldn't be that you have two systems in your living room, one for music, one for movies. So I hope with the FB1 that they will understand this approach and I would even encourage them to, to start with a music experience through Spotify Connect, through Airplay and, and then yes, and then moves, moves nice, naturally and nicely towards a movie experience. Thank you very much. Thank you Phil.